You know, no pun intended, but this is a, really none. But this is a genre. No matter how many people say and debate and argue that this is going to die, it never dies. It never goes away. It keeps evolving into other things. Mm-hmm. Like a zombie. Like a zombie. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you said yourself. Man, yeah. I, said, I said no pun intended, <laughs> and you had to make a pun intended. <laughs> Let's talk about a true innovator in horror, a true legend, a man who changed everything out there. And I'm a little upset about this. I, I was I was a little taken aback. I'm talking about, and you might know since I'm such a huge fan of zombies, I'm talking about none other than George Romero died at 77. That's still young these days, man. As Martin says, I'm mad that he didn't come back. I'm I was sitting there waiting, as I said earlier, in the zombie patch, waiting for him to show up, and he ain't showing up yet. <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm a little upset because I thought that that would have made more news. I mean, horror, horror fans know about it, and, and, and film fans and people that we know. It's funny you say that because I saw it all over Facebook. Yeah, and Twitter. Over Facebook and Twitter, but it, it was the fans that were putting it up because we know those people who do that. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, I was expecting, hey, look. I know it's unrealistic, but I love George Romero so much. I want his shit to just stop. I want CNN to like just stop everything, stop reporting on terrorism, be like, we just got word, legendary director George Romero dead at 77. You want him to get like a Prince thing, like where everybody just stopped and like, we got to talk about it? Yes. Yes, okay. I did. I don't know, did it could have happened, but he blew it. Yeah. Did you see George Romero's halftime show? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, you can't do that. Just stop everybody doing thriller and shit. <laughs> but I get it. To a lot of people, George Romero is no prince. But is he up there with Prince to me and should be for everybody? I think so. If you a yeah. film fan, <laughs> can, I knew he was gonna do yeah. that. I know. Can, can I, but I'm with you. I'm with you. He can he couldn't quite get there because and y'all gonna you're gonna get mad at me for saying this. I'm gonna say it to as much as I want. This is my wish. I wanted things, I wanted life to shut down. And everybody just look at George for a little while. But I just don't think he had to follow through to keep it going. He changed the world. The man changed life. Mm-hmm. I mean, ironic for a man who did something with zombies, but he changed the face not only of horror, but of of entertainment, of movies. Night of the Living Dead is a movie that changed my life as a kid. I used to watch that shit because when I was a kid, they used to have this movie, this show called Night Flight. Oh, yeah. I and they love would, Night Flight. I love Night Flight. And I, you never knew what they were going to play. It, but I can tell you what they played all the time. The original, I think it was like 68 or something like that, uh, Night of the, of the Living Dead, the original black and white classic. Night. Of the living dead. Night. I like the way I took it out. Night. Down the living dead. That piano got a lot of play. (laughs) (laughs) Who live on living flesh. The dead whose haunted souls hunt ungodly creatures. That dude is the end of this. (laughs) He's on. Yeah, he's on the piano. He's talking (laughs) ungodly creatures. And the one that it was it was zombies that I loved, but at the time, what really made it for me, and Martin probably knows where I'm, where I'm coming from with this, it had a black protagonist in it. Yes. And I can't who, I, like who was, the, who was the last one standing. The last one standing. I waited for this. I, when I watched the movie. I said, "Well, you know, I'm gonna wait about 30 seconds for this Negro to die, uh-huh. and then going about my business because that's what <laughs> they're gonna do." I sat there and watched that whole movie, and that he made it. Well, at the end, he got shot by rednecks, but by the cops. Yeah, the, yeah. But, no, it was some. It was some rednecks that shot him. They were out there zombie hunting, and he looked through the window, and they shot his black ass up. And I was like, well, you know, I can't be greedy after all. You know, it was, the, it was back in the day. It's enough that we got this. But it was. Uh, it meant a lot to me that. I mean, that was that was innovative within itself, that the black man didn't die after oh, yeah. two minutes, and. Uh, I was, uh, it became one of my favorite movies for that. You know, George Romero was ahead of his time because he was very socially conscious. I mean, that was, a, that was a move on his part on purpose to make the black person the last one standing. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was amazing. Have you ever seen it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I know you have. I have not. You have not seen no. it. Well, Sammy, can you put him on the show? <laughs> his, his sequel to that was something that brought me back into horror when I because I went through my phases where I liked all kind of different stuff. You know, I was a Spielberg kid coming up, so Spielberg and Disney and animation, all that kind of shit. I was this when you know horror was kind of beneath me and shit too. And I wouldn't watched his other classic, 1978, which was 
Dawn of the Dead, the one that took place in a mall, which was very socially conscious. Dawn of the Dead is here. <laughs> that narration scared the shit out of him. It's here. Oh, fuck! No! <laughs> They will not respond to such emotion. <laughs> Me a kiss. Oh, 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 like dead. Post a band. You know, the, the reason why I love that is because that's the one that really set the rules in for, for zombies. You know, how they came back, how they affected society. The, that's when the apocalypse came in. But also, I just love the whole thing where it's in a mall. And George Romero says, you know, he doesn't like to do anything that doesn't say anything, mm-hmm. which would reflect on what he, how he felt about the genre later. But this was all about, and it wasn't heavy, but it was like, yeah, you know, you can enjoy it as a, as a monster flick or a zombie flick, but it's a statement about consumerism. Mindless consumerism in, of all places, a mall. Sure. And the mall has become a classic setting for zombie things, man. Uh, Dead Rising and yep. all kind of things, man. It's, 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 uh, the guy's had a lot of influence. Now, that's, that's probably right up there top three favorite horror movies ever this the movie i've seen when i saw it i had seen nothing like it i was like 17 years old i don't know why i missed it but it, it again changed my life i was like this is this is changing the rules of everything and it did and also gave me one of my favorite songs not just in horror movies but in all movies one of my favorite themes you remember that jam the gunk that's you done they play that at the end credits of the movie where all the zombies are walking through the mall. That's where this comes from? They, you know, and you, know, you what else is it? I know, but I can't think of it. A lot of people can't think. Sammy, what is it? Oh. Yeah. Hey, before that chicken got it, those zombies had it first. Because everybody, when they hear it, they're like, even some people know the uh, 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 Dawn of the Dead. They're like, what the fuck is that chicken singing, man? I know, I know that shit. <laughs> yeah, Robot Chicken, man. The song is called The Gunk. It's taken from another song, like part of a bigger song, but they put it at the end. It's classic because while the credits are rolling, they got this humorous theme going on. The zombies are just mindlessly shopping, running the walls and doors and shit. But it was amazing. Uh, you know, the thing is, is that he, uh, you know, he completed that trilogy. And by the time that trilogy was done, the guy remained relevant. And that's where your favorite one came out. Oh, The Return you know, of the Living Dead. That, the same year that another, like there was another film that came out, and uh, it was, uh, it was uh, uh, by the time Day of the Dead came out, that was 1985. At the same time, George Romero had turned a trend into mm-hmm. a full-fledged genre. He mm-hmm. invented the genre. Mm-hmm. You had The Return of the Living Dead here, which the genre was so deep now that it was a, they had a comedy. This was a yeah. comedy. Yeah. Star- starring you. Miguel oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I love that scene when he's when that girl's stripping, he's on top of that tombstone. <laughs> yeah, girl. <laughs> Get back, girl. Yeah. It was directed by the guy who wrote Alien, too. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Tell me something. And over uh, uh, over in uh, Italy, Lucio like Fulci. Daniel Bannon? Yeah. Yeah, Daniel mm-hmm. Bannon. Yeah, uh, Lucio Fulci had a uh, zombie, uh, zombie in uh, Zombie 2 coming out. So, it, I mean, it has spread around the world, man. I'm going to show a clip of, uh, of uh, Day of the Dead. It's one of my favorite scenes in movies, man. If I'm not mistaken, I, I could be. What's uh, up? Return of the Living Dead was when they introduced the whole thing of zombies eating brains. Eating brains. Yes. Yeah. That's the one that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. everybody thinks it's there from the beginning, but it wasn't until that movie. No, nah, it was that one. It, uh, <laughs> because, because they always like, brains. The Tar Man. <laughs> yeah, the Tar Man. Yeah. yeah, that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite uh, zombies, man, ever. Uh, but you, as you can see, you didn't have George Romero who invented this. Who could have thought that horror would have become so mainstream with The Walking Dead? You know, we never would have had The Walking Dead. You know, no pun intended, but this is a, really none. But this is a genre. No matter how many people say and debate and argue that this is going to die, it never dies. It never goes away. It keeps evolving into other things. Mm-hmm. Like a zombie. Like a zombie. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Said Man, I, said, I said no pun intended, and you had to make a pun intended. I was trying to walk around that shit. You said exactly what I said. <laughs> no, no. And not bad for a guy that his first paying gig was on Mr. Rogers. There was a, there, there was, and people know the man. He on the George Strombolopoulos show. He, they it's brought Pink it up. Faraday, uh, <laughs> what, what's that? A little sock puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you be my dinner? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> but yeah, he uh, it was, and I guess it was kind of a gory hard thing because Mr. Rogers, you can't find it online. Mr. Rogers went and got a tonsillectomy or whatever, uh-huh. uh, and uh, he had cameras come in and he was narrating the whole thing. These people have kind eyes. But what do you think of this? And the kind eyes. He's high as fuck right now. <laughs> He's being put under. Even though they wore masks, I could see their kind eyes. <laughs> Jesus I, Christ. I could see them carving into me now. <laughs> well, there go my organs. <laughs> but yeah, he, I don't know why you can't find it anymore, but on that show it was brought up. I didn't even know that until recently. Uh, but, you know, brains to, to, to question with a guy that changed the world. I mean, in a way, he is like Prince and other people that do things of, of, of such creative, legendary content. He, you know, he changed the world forever. Uh, we see it changed the genre, created a genre. And why didn't people make such a big deal about his death then? Because, you know, if Spielberg dies, Spielberg is yeah. going to be, the world going to stop. Sure. Spike Lee. If Spike Lee dies, the world going to stop. I feel like he'll get more of the George A. Romero response. Oh, I, I yeah. don't think so. Yeah. Spike, don't... Like, Steven Spielberg is a multiple Oscar award winner. Like, Spike Lee is, what, maybe one or two? If okay. That... Jordan Peele dies. He's gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Based on one movie, get out. <laughs> Do you, but in 1981, because, see, here's the thing about why George Romero, I think a lot of people didn't talk about it. In a way, I get it. In a way, I, I think it's uh, a lot of people who are not giving him his due too much. Uh, because, for one, he always took risk. And he was always out there doing things and not worried about, is it mainstream or is it famous? I'm not even worried about trying to replicate what he was doing. He always went out and took risks. Do you remember 1981 uh, Night Riders? Do you yes. remember that movie? Yeah, with um, um, Ed, Ed Harris. Ed, yeah, Ed Harris. Yeah, a really young Ed Harris. This was like a, a biker the gang. Hell is this? A, man, a biker gang that, that based their credo around King Arthur. Yeah, they jousted on motorcycles, and and it. Yeah, man, it's it was man, it was. It, yeah, he mixed hell angels yeah, with the Renaissance with the fair. fair, and he pulled that shit off. This actually was. Uh, this the eighties. Uh, yeah, yeah nineteen eighty one. Cocaine. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, man, I used to, used to come on HBO and Showtime all the time. I remember when I first saw this on TV, I was like, what the fuck is this? And, it, and and I would watch it because he was still being socially conscious with it ahead of his time because it was Hell's Angels mixed with the Renaissance with a dash of homosexuality thrown in there. And there was a dude who was trying to come out or questioning himself in the movie. It, in the movie, like I said, it's so crazy and pulled off all this shit, but it got critical acclaim. Yeah, now. it pulled it off. Yeah, it man, it really did. It was like they played like Knights of the Round Table on bikes to the very end. Yeah, like they they, they had kings and squires and, all in, the of stuff. Day. in the modern day. In the yeah, in the modern day. <laughs> okay, <laughs> starring me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, we were looking. That dude looks like the Indian dude from Street Fighter. Don't see him. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and there was some other things that he would do that people didn't get, and people today. They say, yeah, you know what? People should have paid more attention to it back at the time because it was a it was an amazing film. And a lot of people who discover his later movies say, wow, I kind of like this better than some of his zombie films, including himself. Do you remember uh, Martin? <laughs> My the, the, the vampire? Yeah, it was about a dude. It was here in 1978. It was about a dude who thought he was a vampire. My name is Martin. I'm going to use that for every time I introduce you. <laughs> I'm 84 years old. I'd like to be normal. I just have a sickness. The only way I can survive is by drinking blood. What was cool about the movie is that you didn't know if he really was a vampire or not. Like, you know, if like he was vampires crazy. Vampires kissed before vampires kissed. And did it much better uh-huh. if you ask me. Yeah, it's uh. Yo, you didn't have Nicholas Cage. <laughs> I'm a vampire! <laughs> Hi, my name's Martin. <laughs> I'm fucking nuts. Nuts! <laughs> you know, <Elbow>? piss, blood! <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, he says that people, he was saying that people come up today and they actually have him sign. Well, not anymore, but at the time they said, <laughs> come on, I'm like, tombstone. Yeah. Hey, can you sign my copy of Martin? <laughs> come on, man. Jose Romero's a dick. Yeah. <laughs> come on, rise, man. <laughs> sign this shit. <laughs> but yeah, he said people have him, had him sign more copies of Martin than, uh, than than zombie movies now. And he said, it's my favorite movie. And, uh, you know, he was, uh, but at the time, I don't know if a lot of people really got it. I know a lot of people did like it, but I don't know if it was, uh, 
you know, he I guess he was the the zombie man, not the not the vampire guy, you sure. know. And some of the stuff, I, I look, I give him credit for trying, but some people said, "All right, now you're getting fucking ridiculous." <laughs> Monkey shy. I didn't know he did this. Into terror. <laughs> Leap in the terror. It was about a monkey. I ain't gonna lie. I love the title. Monkey shots. <laughs> yeah, man. It, it is exactly what you think it is. It's about, well, not exactly. I actually love the premise. Mm-hmm. A handicapped dude gets a, a, a an assistant monkey uh-huh. who mm-hmm. kills for him. Man. That it looks awesome. Yeah. yeah. Better than child's play. I get that. Yeah. Man, if you give me a killer monkey movie like that with a dude in a wheelchair, I'm all in. Dude, this Saturday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> monkey signs. Hey, I'll be there with you, man, because I've never seen it. You've never seen it? I've, no, I've never seen this. It came out oh. in ni- yeah, it came out in 1988, man. I never saw it. I it was, saw this years ago. Did you? I was like six when I saw this. Did it scare the fuck out of you then? No, it was kind of boring, actually. Of course it didn't, because it was a monkey with a switchblade. It's like no matter how dangerous see, that, that they try to portray it's still a monkey with a switchblade that shit is funny I mean, let me shave you real quick yeah, yeah. and the dude is actually moving the monkey he's like no well, I remember like there's that shot of that monkey just like on top of like a shelf just looking down menacingly just going like <laughs> <laughs> Coming up. Uh, where is it? Oh, wait a minute. I know which one you talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got your ass. It's a mean I, I, monkey. I think it's time to remake this. It was a hard sell, but you hey, you tried. Yeah. Try something yeah. different. You tried. Yeah. You know, it was when and when he did do things that were kind of decent and uh, uh, when he teamed himself up with a big name, sometimes it worked. Now, not all the time. When he started teaming up with Stephen King. You know, Stephen King, we have a, like they say, we have a Stephen King renaissance now. But at the time, everybody was making Stephen King movies so much that they were hit and miss. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, what is this, 1993, The Dark Half? Yeah. When that came out, George Romero directed that. And you wouldn't know because the movie was a critical and financial failure. Who was that? Was it Timothy Hutton? Timothy Hutton. Yeah, the one where he's like a, he has a, a, a dark personality of himself. Yeah. He's a writer and his evil half comes out, yeah. which is kind of a played out. Yeah, uh, Dr. Jekyll, uh, Mr. Hyde. Yeah, thing. yeah, you know, the, the my evil spirit coming out of my evil... It's uh, not me, it's that actor. Yeah, yeah. What <laughs> Who you, happens to be me. My evil yeah. doppelganger. Yeah. yeah, but he did team up with, uh, with Stephen King to create an original piece of horror, which today is one of my all-time favorite movies. Creep Show. From the author of Carrie, The Shining, and Cujo. And the creator of Night. About that point, you're like, yeah, yeah, Stephen King. You don't even hear George Romero. <laughs> and like, yeah, they got his name on the screen, but at that time, you hear Stephen King and you gone. Yeah, he's right. essentially Robin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, you don't even hear George Romero. They say, Stephen King. Yeah! George Romero. Right. Yeah! George Romero. George Romero. <laughs> they got him in there. <laughs> yeah, but the movie is uh it's it the movie is uh, I, I love it. It's a uh, it's a uh, horror comedy now. I, I watch it every watch it every Halloween, man. It's more of a cult classic, but even with the good movies. Hmm. He's thinking, yeah, it's and man. Remember it tells to call you Billy. <laughs> oh, I know. A lot of people don't even remember the creepy kid in it when his dad took his comic book away and he's in his room with lightning going and shit. I hope you burn it hell. That shit scared the fuck out of me before the monsters oh, yeah. even showed up. Yeah. That oh, that kid right there. <laughs> With that, that's like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the, uh, that's like one of the stories, the creepy kid, like the prologue and the epilogue. It's a, it's a, it's a cult classic, and over the years, it's become like a classic piece of uh, horror, an art horror comedy. But still under that shadow of Stephen King, a lot yeah. of you know, it's, it's in uh, a lot of people don't give George Romero his due on that. He directed the movie, and you know he, and the guy went on to. It's not like he ever did not become relevant. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he, the people were still remaking his stuff. Like you had the, the crazies, which oh, came right. out in 1973, but they kept remaking the stuff like 2010. They made uh, the remake of that. Do you not like the remake of that? I, I, I'm not crazy about it. I think it's all right. It's okay. Yeah. I'm a big fan. I, of, I like it. I, I, no, it's, I, no, it's not bad. I don't think it's great. Now, Dawn of the Dead. The 2004 remake. Yeah, that was dope. Yeah. yeah. That's Zack Snyder's best movie. Yep. Still I, to this yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, man. And that's a that, that's an amazing film. And so it's not like the guy ever became irrelevant, but I think where things start to decline with him is where I think he became just a little I'm not gonna maybe stubborn is the wrong word, but standoffish. He, no, he just he just didn't become as progressive hmm. as uh as the genre did. 
mm. if it makes sense. Because at that time, he came out with, and they weren't bad movies. They were actually, you know, they weren't great, but they, but they weren't hated. Critics gave them decent reviews, like uh, Land of the Dead mm-hmm. right. and Diary of the Dead. I like Diary of the Dead. The oh. family, and he was trying new things with them. Like, he evolved. Mm-hmm. He evolved the zombies to where they were now thinking they like they were led by a black dude that looked like he worked at a gas station. He did right. work at a gas station, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right? Because I remember I, I saw Land of the Dead, but like, that was the hook, right? That the zombies were getting smarter. They were yeah, getting they, smarter, using guns and things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, they actually had a revolt and were going off to start their own land and shit. And, mm-hmm. and Diary of the Dead was the one where it was the found footage. Mm-hmm. They were going to start zombie land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you joke, but yeah, they really were going, going off to start their own zombie sovereign nation. And <laughs> <laughs> legit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. like they were taking out the human settlements so they could go start their own thing. You're like, all right, we'll roll with that. Sure, why not? But I think that w- with him, and you know, there were things that he just wasn't doing where the rest of the of the genre it was doing things to evolve more mm-hmm. than what he was doing. Uh, like you have twenty, and let me put up this up here because I've got to put down the put up the image, but. Things like 28 Days Later, you know, which oh, yeah. which helped it evolve, you know, brought in brought in the fast zombies. Uh-huh. Even uh, the remake of uh, Dawn of the Dead yeah. 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 had fast zombies in it. He was just he was just not able to. I, I don't think he kind of kept up enough, even when he was trying to evolve, because his stuff started kind of doing the same thing, even though that they they weren't bad, but they would have the whole cycle of. The humans were worse than the zombies. One asshole or two asshole humans would screw something something up and a bunch of zombies would invade and then everything would go crazy and sure. everybody would die. And, you know, I, I, and, and the movies also just got bad. Survival of the Dead was the one where they said, yeah, this is... This is you remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> came out in 20... Yeah, it came out in 2010. That was just... A bad movie. It was so bad that they just said, "Don't worry about the theater, George." We just we go. They got this thing called DVD now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only families ever lived on this island were yours and mine. No strangers. What are you gonna do with them? They're Muldoons. It's up to me to save them. It was some interesting ideas in there, but the acting was bad. You mean we saw? You saw it with me. We were at Fantastic Fest, really? and George Romero was there. Wow. Yeah, Marvel it's that forgettable. Drunk. <laughs> yeah. No, he was sober. He just forgot the movie. You saw it, right? Yeah, yeah. That was one of the things too because I was watching it. I wasn't a big fan of uh, Land Land of the Dead. I remember that came out like the same weekend as The Dark Knight. I'm sorry, uh, Batman Begins. I did. wasn't either. Yeah, but then I saw Diary of the Dead at home, and I was like, oh wow, this is this is decent. Let me go ahead and check out this uh, Survival of the Dead thing. I made it 20 minutes and it cut that shit off. I'm like, I can't. This is horrible. <laughs> like that's on some House of the Dead shit. And I hate that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no, it was it, it it was bad, man. It was real bad, man. I tell you what, I, I, I Diary of the Dead is not one of my favorites either. But they got that Amish dude. Man, they got that Amish dude. <laughs> that Amish dude. I even found a man. Even somebody said, man, we right there with you. The chorus. They said, man, that's the best best scene in the movie. Mm-hmm. Where did he go? Ah, ah, oh, Jesus. Ah, Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he said, like, I ain't got no car, but I got some goddamn dynamite yeah. in my barn. That dynamite in that pitchfork. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was going in with that. Yeah, that movie, dude. yeah. I said, man, the reason why I'm, I'm really sorry George Romero's gone, because I think the, well, I don't know spoilers, but I would love to have seen a spinoff with the Amish dude. <laughs> this is where Martin comes in, because in addition to the decline of his films, uh, while things seemed like they were progressing and everybody was happy with zombies, he's like, yeah, but nobody check with me. <laughs> Yeah, it's like he like you know, all that talk of him being the Godfather or the father of zombies went to his head, and he really accepted that title like it was real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I yeah, it was the whole thing where the the guys making Walking Dead asked him to to direct some episodes. He's like, hey, you, you're the king of this, and he was like, fair. He's like uh, Martin Landau is Bella Lugosi, like. Nah, this shit you guys do. His it was like what you're doing is making a, a soap opera that has zombies drop by every so often. I don't want any part of that. Yeah, it's it, like man, you could have really come in and done something, or at least just had your name stamped on. That it. said, that is a very accurate description of the oh, show. No, 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 no. I, I mean, you hear that, you go like, well, yeah, that does describe yeah. it to a point. 
but he could have come in just just to have his name mm-hmm. on it or say like, well, I'm gonna do some episodes that do have more zombies. In yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking at uh the Telegraph.co.uk I did an interview with him and it's in there where they said they asked him about that and they're like, yeah, you thought the Walking Dead was a soap opera? I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, they didn't, they didn't call me. Yeah, but, yeah me. I mean, but the thing is, if you're gonna do a TV series, it has to be a soap opera. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But it wasn't I think me. They, they asked him this during the old, what was that season two? The whole where they're on the farm majority of, it, and he was like, this is not what I'm into. And I, I don't blame him for that because mm. when they that farm yeah it was kind of lame yeah. but still i mean be a little humble about it you know people are trying to pay they, they were trying to pay him respect even in death the makers of robert kirkman and everybody they're like yeah man you know a guy was talking shit about us but we owe him yeah a lot and i really think it was i'm not gonna say that that's the case but i think that a lot of people just kind of like all right well fuck you then <laughs> <laughs> you know and he was talking shit about Everything. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, every, if it wasn't his name on it, he didn't like it. Like, uh, <laughs> man, World War Z, he was talking about. He said Romero doubled down, spewing some relentless World War Z hate. Along comes Brad Pitt. This is what he said. Along comes Brad Pitt and spends $400 million or whatever the hell to do World War Z. Max Brooks is a friend of mine, and I thought the film was, a, it was not at all representative of the book. And the zombies were, I don't know, ants crawling all over each other in Israel. <laughs> Army ants. You might as well make the naked jungle. The naked jungle is another movie about killer ants, which you know, a lot of people. I'm like, hey man, you know that scene was kind of cool. Yeah, where they, they did something different. Where the ants were, where they were crawling. People like that. They say where the mm-hmm. where the zombies are crawling over each other. That was one of the selling points of the film. And to give credit right there for that, uh, that was the AV Club where that that quote came from. But I don't know, man, for a guy that really had everybody wanting to kiss his ass. Seemed, I'm not saying he was, but seemed a little better. I mean, honestly, man, it, it's something that happens to a lot of people as they get older. There's some point where they lock in time, and it's hard for them to move past that. Yeah, I, and I think that's one of the things that was with him. I think he was kind of stubborn and didn't want to see the, the evolution that he created happen. Like everything you're doing right now, there's a point where it will evolve, and you'll go with it. And you'll go with it, and it'll at one point evolve to a point where you don't even recognize it yeah. anymore, and you'll just be like, "Nah, I'm not with that." But okay. that's weird though, because he was like willing to make a, a a found footage movie with zombies in it, and a found footage is like a new thing. So he would step in and do that, but he wouldn't want to step he in and do something else. He didn't invent found footage though, right? What I'm saying, like I'm saying, you're saying he's not willing to try new things and improve on what what he has, and like I feel like when he was he was trying to do something with that was Diary of the Dead, and obviously he wasn't received well. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. like all right, you're willing to try something new, but you won't update your 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 status quo when it comes to this. It's kind of odd. No, I, I get you, mm-hmm. and you know, I, but I, again, I think like if he if nobody was talking to him, right. You know, and then hey, I then y'all shouldn't be doing that. Mm-hmm. You, they, they didn't ask me first. You didn't kiss the rain, <laughs> kiss that rotten hand. Resident yeah. Evil. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's another thing I think he was upset about because he was supposed to do Resident Evil. Oh. There was a script that he did, and the script was was uh, very faithful mm-hmm. to the game. Okay. Uh, I've actually read a little bit of the script, and they kept. I mean, it's hard to tell whether that would have been great or it would have been. Stupid. You were almost a chill sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might be, yeah, it might have been dumb because he left the spiders in there and all, oh. all kind of stuff that, like, man, I don't know, maybe that need to be cut, cut it, I need to be cut out. But I think that he had done that, and when he looks at what they did today, you know, this kind of crazy shit with Mia Yolovich and all. Uh, oh, yeah, I know right, that's your favorite movie. <laughs> uh, which one is that? The final chapter. The final chapter. Which yeah. it ain't. <laughs> No, <laughs> yeah, definitely not. And maybe it's for the best. I don't know, but it's definitely something where I think he said, "Man, again, you wouldn't have Resident Evil without me, and you kicking me out to do this right here." But at the same time, did things his way up until the end. But I think that that's the reason why he's not getting the kind of respect that I think he should get because a lot of people just they tried to give it to him, he didn't want it, or mm-hmm. he just didn't evolve enough. To where the genre did that he created, yeah, not enough to keep his name out there. Yeah, yeah, and I, and it's sad too because I mean Martin's right. No matter how much you've done to innovate something or create something, if you're not relevant, it's I mean, that's not that's not the case all the time. But if you're not, sometimes what you did can bury you. Even though by no means did this bury him. People today are, are saying, sure. you know, this man deserves the utmost respect. Like me. Yeah, you got anything to say? Uh, no, I mean, I, I agree with your point, Martin. It, like, he was given opportunities to be culturally, uh, culturally relevant to, in his final days, and he kind of turned his nose up at him. I, I kind of get 
I, I, I could understand why oh, I he get did it too. Yeah. I, I don't look down on him for doing it. No, I mean, the thing is, okay, say you create a legacy where you're remembered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Say you don't. Mm-hmm. It's the same difference. Yeah. 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 Like, once you die, <laughs> like, yeah. but you won't be remembered. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, I don't care. I'm dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and as much as we joke, you ain't coming back. It's like they're, asking, yeah. they're asking me to direct a show that I don't like, and I'm in my 70s. Fuck off. Exactly. <laughs> like, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get it too. But hey, Part of that is because anybody got any pardon words? We're about to leave the segment. I don't want to just mm-hmm. dominate completely. Anybody, anybody, anybody hey man, good for him. Yeah. You know what? He mm-hmm. he he made his mark. We we're he talking did. about it. Mm-hmm. No, he did. Most and, of us won't get that. He and look, he is he is a prince, purple prince. You know, he is <laughs> he is a prince to me. I love Prince and dedicated a whole show to Prince. I'm not gonna do it here with him, but you know the he he's right up there. Mm-hmm. With any with any other legend, so I don't see you dressed up like him though. <laughs> yeah, That's true. Yeah, we, we are ded- dedicating the whole show. Yeah, so that automatically makes him go Prince. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, man. Because Prince was kicking it to the very end. Yeah, I like that Prince Jam he got going right there. <laughs> yeah, seventy-seven. <laughs> That's his purple rain. That's his purple rain right there. Seventy-seven years old, man. A lot of respect to the man right there. Like I've always said, I loved. I, I love him and it's rare that you get to live in a period where you see somebody create something like the way he did Mm -hmm. so he gave us a gift for sure 